good evening and welcome to the happenings in Medfield. I have the privilege to sit with Mike Sullivan, the town administrator, and he and I discuss the happenings in Medfield. It's always a pleasure. We, we chat regarding areas of coverage that you're not going to find in the papers, but you'll find them right from Mike. And so without further ado, once again, I'd like to welcome Mike. Nice Hi, to see Jack. you. Hi, Jack. How's it going? Good uh, to see you. Boy, these months go by faster in the warm weather than they do in the winter, don't they? Yeah, it's beautiful out there. It's going it to be is. a warm one today, I understand. Well, I'll take it. Come so after, I. after this past yeah. winter, a few good warm days. It's yeah. something to remember in January and February. So. Kind of put that aside, you know, forget it happened. Yes. <laughs> well, you could put it in a jar and save it till January and February, <laughs> open it up and warm up. So. Oh, but. true. But well, let's get started. You know, I had noted that uh, at Hospital Road is closed. So what's happening? A little piece. Uh, it should only be for a short time. Um, they've started putting the water main in that's going to be part of the water tower replacement project and uh, they hit a piece of ledge uh, just north of uh, Harding Street. So once I get through the ledge they'll have enough room there and then once I get past the houses because as soon as you get past Copperfield there aren't too many houses. So uh, they should be able to keep the road open um, for the duration but um, they uh, started that water main will go all the way up Hospital Road to 27 and then up 27 um, up to the uh, well number six and then there'll be another piece that shoots off and goes into where the water tower is going to hook it into the water tower. Well they've got some work ahead of them then if that's the case. They certainly do yeah but um, they're, they're uh, uh, it's it's a good spot to work. You don't have a lot of houses or not a lot of side connections, and and once they get past this area, the boring show. It's pretty good gravel. They will. They have to go into the railroad tracks uh, up further when you get past the hospital. What are they going to do with the tracks? Crossing. Now they paved the the, the tracks there. Um, they'll go under the track. They have to under put, the track. They have to put a sleeve under the track, mm -hmm. and then a water main will go through the sleeve. Um, but they'll have a crew from CSX Railroad on site when they go under the tracks and the long agreement we had to sign to protect them because that is an active rail line so um, that's a little complicated but well in other words Mike they've got a lot of construction to do hospital road all the way down from there don't they they do and that has to be coordinated this the, the uh, state is going to be uh, hauling the material out of the uh, the riverfront, you know, up on the hospital where they've been cleaning up for the last couple of years. So they're in the final stages of that and they'll be hauling fill out. That will go up Hospital Road out to 27 and out that way. So um, so they're hoping that uh, they can work that out with uh, the uh, crews putting the water main in so that when do they, they don't get in each other's this? way. Well, and they're working on Hospital Road now, but they'd like to start as soon as possible. They haven't signed the agreement with the contract that's going to be doing the work, but they expect to sign that shortly, and so it probably would be within the next few weeks. I would think they would have started on that. So. Well, then, will Hospital Road still be closed, though? Mm, it should, no, it shouldn't be closed. As they, once they get past the ledge where they're working now, they should once be able to keep it open. All yeah. those homes, yeah. now, now they might have to close it when they're put, going under the railroad tracks for That's what I was a thinking brief about, state, yeah. but um, they might not, you know. It's, it depends on what they hit when they go under. Well, so a little bit of work ahead of them. It is, and then the water tower will go out to bid in August. Uh, That's the end what I of wanted August. to ask you about, the water tower. Yeah, and they'd like to get that started uh, this fall. Uh, <clears throat> there is some of the soil around the water tower that has uh, uh, lead, which you would expect because they used to paint the water tower with a lead-based paint. So over the years, if you f it's flaking off or chipping off, you get some lead in the soil. So they do have to remove some of the soil. 
uh, they're hoping to uh, be able to, because the levels are fairly low, hoping to be able to dispose of some of that uh, uh, where they're uh, doing the remediation work along the uh, hospital site. So, um, so they're hoping to have, by next summer, to have the water tower online, new water tower, and then they'll have to demolish the old one. So. Well, now from the, uh, the new water tower and the configuration of this, it, it means that we have an ample supply because of only one pump at the moment, I understand. Uh, well, there's, one, there's only one water tower operation, yeah, the Mount Nebo water one tower, one yeah. Tower, yeah. And that'll give us uh, much better pressure. Uh, it should reduce our electric bills because you uh, don't have to pump the water as far. You can, it's a much more direct route to get to that water tower, so when you're filling up the water tower, you don't have to go halfway across the town. Well, obviously some of it will uh, fill up the Mount Nebo water tower, but uh, far less will have to be pumped all the way over to Mount Nebo and then distributed back through the town. When do they contemplate finishing the project itself? Do you have any ideas? The, the water tower? The water tower and the and connections the and so forth. About a year. About a yeah, year. They're hoping next summer. Now it may be a little bit longer before they demolish the tank, but usually those things go very quickly. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, they took down Odyssey House uh, a few couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that's all gone. That was that old dilapidated barn-like building that was on the other side of Hospital Road on the McCarthy Field side of Hospital Road. So oh. that's all gone. Uh, so they are making a lot of progress. They're hoping uh, this year to have the site along the river cleaned up. Well, that's great. Uh, so, and then um, the legislation for the town to acquire the land is moving along. It has to move pretty quickly at this point because the legislature adjourns July 30th. That's it. So they have to have it pass through both branches of the legislature before they adjourn uh, because they won't be back in formal session until after the next state election in November. Um, by that time, there'll be a new legislature that'll be elected and they, they get sworn in in January and everything starts all over again. So if they don't get the legislation for the town to buy it approved by the legislature June 30th, It'll be starting over again, but um, it has uh, passed and been engrossed in the House and in the Senate. So then it has to go back to Joint Conference Committee if there's any differences, which I don't think there are, and then has to be voted on by, I believe it's a roll call vote of the both branches of the legislature. So uh, they should be able to get that done, even though they have an awful lot of bills to act on the next two weeks. We're ho hoping this will be fairly routine and we'll get approved. Then it goes to the governor for signature. He has so many days to uh, sign it, uh, but we've been assured that he's on board and he will sign that. Um, and then it'll, it'll probably be a f few months before we work out the details of, although I think they've got the property surveyed, uh, but you have to draw up uh, a deed and conditions and whatnot, so that takes a little bit of time. But I would think by the end of the year, we, if the legislation gets approved, we'll probably um, own that hospital. Then it looks at this moment positive. I'd say so, yes, yeah. Now, not to say that there couldn't be some snag coming down the road that we don't anticipate, but. Uh, it's only two, about two weeks to the well, last to the end of the legislative session, so if snag's going to come, it's going to come pretty quickly. But I'd say right now it looks positive for legislation to pass, giving the state approval to sell the land to the town. Then, Mike, when that is approved, this is hypothetical, when this is all approved, Medfield owns that property. There's other entities that they have we have to go through. Well, they've taken actually the occupant of that area. Well, we have to uh, 
sign a, a deed just as you would when you buy a house. Uh, we have to uh, s uh, sign a deed and, and agree to the payment method. Uh, I think probably what payment method will be to deduct uh, the amounts from our annual state aid allotment and that way we um, don't incur any interest charges. Um, the disadvantage is you have to pay it off in 10 years instead of 20 so uh, what you save on interest you make up for in larger principal payments but those principal payments are only for 10 years not 20 years. So it's a um, um, I think it's a pretty good solution. Uh, we also have to remember that we are bonding in September for the water tower and for the purchase of Redgate Farm. So that's about between the two of them. Uh, it'll be six, uh, six million, about a little, about seven point four million dollars almost will be bonding. We're trying to borrow that money as soon as possible before the interest rates start to go up. There's a lot of people predicting that interest rates will start to rise shortly, so we're hoping to get in our borrowing within the window before the rates start to rise. So we're going to borrow mid-September. Question for buildings up there. Yes. <laughs> uh, what would you like to know about <laughs> decrepit, waterlogged. Uh, they are, really. They are. Some of them have holes in the roofs and what, whatnot. And I'm sure there's a lot of lead paint and asbestos. Well, not uh, not too much asbestos, I think. Some of the, the age of some of those buildings, they're probably pre-asbestos. Although you may get asbestos in floor tiles. And, and you got mildew and... Mildew, yes. I mean, I yes. understand there's yeah. still water in the basements in some of those. Uh, yes, I ten years ago I went to one of the buildings that was a couple of feet of water in the basement. One of them, so I imagine uh, it would be a lot to think about. Uh, as, as you know, the selectmen appointed a committee this summer to take a look at it and try to come up with a redevelopment plan for it, and, and appropriated I think it was three hundred thousand dollars to uh, get them started. So um, we'll see what they can do and uh, 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 hope for the best. Let's hope so, Mike. Yes. That brings up a point. Uh, I was having my coffee and donuts, as usual. And the lady came up to me. I have so many choices now. How are you going to pick where you have your coffee and donuts? You'll have to spread the wealth and go to a different one every day. And <laughs> yeah, but I like yeah. the blue moon. <laughs> yes, uh, I do too. I love but that then, bread. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the lady came up to me and she asked them, because she's very fond of one particular building, and that was the chapel. I think everybody is in kind of a general agreement that if anything uh, should remain up there, it should be the chapel. It is a, uh, yeah, a nice building. It's the one building you can really see when you drive up along Hospital Road. So. Yeah, but that is a, you know, I've been in that chapel. It's beautiful. There's no question about yes. it. Yeah. And it has a nice stage, you know. If, uh, some people have talked about trying to turn it into some sort of performing arts center. Um, and in fact, they had a group of students from Wentworth that took a look at those properties as a class project. And it was interesting because they had not only architectural students, they had construction majors and they had uh, law students and um, economics majors taking a look and, and trying to come up with some redevelopment plans. And uh, I guess some of their proposals were quite interesting. Most of them were based around sort of nonprofit type things. And certainly, we, if we're going to pay the bills up there, we need more than nonprofit sure up there. Do. We have to have sure. something sure. that uh, generates cash flow uh, to pay the bills. So, um, but um, uh, there are a lot of talented people on the committee the selectmen appointed. And uh, we're hoping they'll come up with some good ideas. Of course, the economy seems to be doing a little bit better now, so that should help. It is up. She's up 17 points as far as stocks. The stock, is it? Yeah. Yes. Boy, it's been going up so long, you wonder how, you know, when it's going to reverse and And unemployment down. is down and, you know. Yes. Um, One question that has come up a number of times, and uh, I have heard 
relative to a special town meeting is going to be called? Well, the committee, you know, initially talked, uh, this was the old committee, the, uh, uh, there were so many committees dealing with the state hospital, I have trouble keeping them straight, but yeah. uh, the committee that was active last year and, uh, uh, and went to town meeting with the recommendation to buy the property, they were suggesting a timetable. Um, uh, it would probably put it further away from that. But I think what you're talking about is the public safety building. Right. That um, was my next question. Yes. Both of them, right? That, uh, the town meeting approved funding for final design documents to be prepared uh, and allow it to go out to bid. And the, the permanent uh, planning and building committee would like to get started next spring as early as possible so they can do a lot of the preliminary work and try to get in so far as possible the building enclosed before the winter. So they've been talking about possibly having a special town meeting in January and an override election in February. Um, but that depends on how everything falls into place but that's the tenet of thinking right now. They'd prefer not to wait until the annual town meeting because they would probably miss the construction season and they'd like to get bids out early. I guess the earlier you get your bids out, the more likely you are to get a better range of bidders, you get a few more bidders on it because they don't have other work lined up. Mike, I found is uh, still the same. Uh, I've been down to the new town garage. That looks real good. It is spectacular. I was down there. We have weekly construction meetings at 8 o'clock Tuesday mornings. And looks real I went good. down there, and it's probably about a month away. You know, it was scheduled to be done August 4th. Uh, of course, it was the, the winter. I was going to say the winter from hell, but it was more like the winter from the North Pole. <laughs> um, but um, so they'll probably be a, a couple of weeks late. but pretty much on schedule uh, and it really is I think people are going to be very pleasantly surprised with it so now if the situation develops relative to fire department and the, and the police and the move I understand for the fire chief is going over to the town garage and the uh, police are moving out on uh, Old Eisenhower Road well, um, actually what they're gonna do is they're gonna put some bids out for office space. Um, there may be some vacant industrial space, something like we did when the town hall was renovated. We moved down yeah, to a, a spot yeah. on uh, West Street and we were there a couple of years. The advantage of something like that is they already have the infrastructure in place. They have the the fiber optic cable and the telephone lines and the electricity, you don't have to bring no. it in. So uh, that's the thinking right now is to try to lease some space in town for the police station and to put the fire station temporarily in a couple of bays of the town garage. That's what I understand. Yeah, so uh, that sh if we're able to do that, that should save quite a bit of money on relocation costs, moving costs, rental costs, whatnot. So. That's important. Yes. Because I find that uh, moving the police department all the way out to Old Lodge Road, you've got all the communications and everything. That's a problem and a half. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's why this newer solution that they are trying to implement would be much better, much when's better that cost wise. When's that going to? contemplate bidding and all that stuff. Well, they're going out to bid in a couple of weeks. Uh, and it, what makes it a little difficult is, you know, if you go to town meeting and say, well, we've already rented space, it, it seems to assume that you're assuming the voters are going to approve the public safety project. Um, and more than likely, based on the voter town meeting, they will. On the other hand, you never know what happens between now and January, um, but if you don't go out to bid now uh, and you try to rent the space next January, you might not be able to find any space and no, no, it's going to take you a few months to mm -hmm. organize your move. So it's almost worth the risk to rent the space earlier 
and uh, e even if even if the you know rent it for six months and that'll get you through the town meeting time and if the town meeting doesn't approve it then you've lost some money but um, it's much cheaper in the long run and I think uh, as I said given the vote so far at town meeting it I would think the town is likely to approve public safety. It's important. It, it is one of the critical services that the town provides and one that people seem to uh, uh, be willing to spend money on. So. Mike, let's move downtown. Yes, boy, a lot going on downtown these there days. There's a yeah. lot going on. I wanted Some to ask you, number yes. one, uh, the building next to the townhouse, how is that progressing? Uh, well, which building next to the townhouse is all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think you mean the, uh, what the, uh, it was originally called the Ord's Block and then it was uh, lately called the Allen's Block. And the Allen property, because yes. we, we discussed that the last time we were sitting here and I was just wondering how that was going to. Well, uh, the uh, planning board approved the, um, I was the planning board or the zoning board, he has to go to both, but. I think it was the planning board that approved it. Um, so he's got a, his approvals. He probably needs some additional approvals. Um, one of the big problems was he doesn't have much parking there. Yeah, the parking building. is going to be a. And it's going to be a bear downtown, we think. Although, you know, uh, Master's Touch generated a lot of cars there. They were, the employees would leave their cars in the parking lot behind the building all day and and then at night they leave their trucks there so and then you've got the daycare center of the Baptist Church some of their employees park there you've got the dentist's office now you get a karate studio you got zebras you know the town hall you got the library some of the library yeah. personnel park there so it already is a somewhat of a parking problem but um, but that project has been approved. Now he's got to get going, and he's got to do a lot of other things. He's got to get approval on the building code. You know, he's probably going to have to put an elevator in and make it handicapped accessible, and put a sprinkler system. So he's got a lot of work to done to do before he can uh, start remodeling on that. But that's moving along. And then, of course, the building across the street. That's what I was going to ask you about. The uh, our our famous. Green Building, uh, um, that's uh, scheduled to open beginning of August, which is only a couple of weeks away. That is. In fact, I believe this week they're trying to start training their employees, um, and they're still rushing around trying to get the equipment in place and the mural painted on the side of the building. I want to ask you about that mural. Yes. Well, a lot of people will wonder what that is about. Um, my understanding is originally there was a store at that location that was owned by a gentleman called Mr. Onion, and his nickname was Emperor. So they used to call him Emperor Onion. So um, the store was Emperor Onion's store. It was sort of like a general store, and uh, that's the mural they're painting on the side of the building. Well, that's what they're so doing. So it's, it's a little piece of history. Uh, I went inside for the first time last week, and it's pretty modern inside. They have polished concrete floors, which doesn't sound too fancy, but they're actually very attractive, I think. Um, and they have uh, different food stations, you know, for fish and meat and bread and f produce and a f small frozen food section. They have a coffee shop. Uh, will they still have a coffee uh, yes, counter? Yes, they will. That's why I was, when I was kidding part of it. I said, you're going to have so many choices between. Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and Blue Moon yeah. and and uh, Brothers Marketplace. It's yeah. Yeah, we'll all become coffeeholics. So. <laughs> How true! How if we're true. not already there, huh? um, but um, they and they're going to have a big commissary in the basement where they, they do, uh, cook a lot of the food. So I guess they'll have a lot of prepared food there. So it'll be interesting to see it when you know now it's last week it was somewhat chaos there were people running all over there was equipment all over and oh, yeah, machinery so. all over the place so um, and uh, w we managed to get the sidewalk in and with a brick trim that was all finished um, 
And they got the trees along. Got Comments the trees. about the paint, uh, the color of the yes, building. Yes, it's not yeah. everyone's favorite color, I guess, <laughs> put it that way, uh, including myself. Uh, yeah. But um, the, uh, as somebody said to me, well, they're a food store. They sell food. They don't sell paint. So. <laughs> uh, um, the other um, interesting thing is, is uh, Bank of America uh, wants to rip up all the brick in front of, of the bank and replace it with concrete. Uh, Say that to me again. Who? Bank of America is proposing to rip up all the brick. You know, they have like brick walkways and all the way up entrance into the bank. Into the bank, yes. Um, in part, I, I know the library has had some problems with the brick, but it kind of. Oh, they had some of those bricks for. Buckles raised, yeah. and, and they get slippery in the they are, rain. Plus, so. the fact they raise and people can trip. Yes, yeah, so that may have been part of the bank's thinking. Of course, you know, the Historic District Commission um, uh, has some concerns about that, so th they'll be meeting tonight, the day we're filming this, to uh, try to work out the differences on that and see if they can come to some accommodation. But uh, it's always exciting in the downtown. It's, uh, it is. One other area which I was approached by, this lady said, I have two youngsters and uh, when are they going to make availability for parking? Because I usually take the little ones over to the library when I park in that area, you know, for their schooling and so forth. And I told her, I said, that I can't tell you, but as soon as we get through interviewing, well, we can possibly know. So I don't know, but it'll, for parking makes it very difficult. It does, and uh, they should have the parking lot opened up when the store opens, uh, yeah, because oh. they have to have the an occupancy permit to occupy the building, and that includes the parking. So uh, I know they've had a lot of people working over there on it, and uh, so I would say in the next couple of weeks. Next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, I was watching the selectmen meeting, Mike, for the 17th. You have one gentleman, but he seemed to be representing I don't know how many committees. <laughs> That, that was Matt McCormick, yes. He is, uh, we're fortunate that he volunteers to be on so many committees, but uh, we put together a group of all the, or most of the groups that are involved in downtown redevelopment, whatever, and there are an awful lot of them. There's the Downtown Study Committee, the Aesthetics Committee, the Cultural District Committee, the <laughs> Cultural <laughs> Council, the. You get a lot uh, the, on page the, one. Pl the planning board, the library trustees, the selectmen, you know, you've got, um, and, and as someone said, maybe we need fewer committees and a little more coordination. Maybe we ought to, or at least have one master plan committee that oversees it. <laughs> and, and, oversees and, all the committees. Yes, <laughs> yeah. A super committee, I guess. Uh, so they're gonna, they've asked uh, Sarah Raposa, who's the town planner, to take a look at that and see if she might do something similar to what she did last fall when they had a visioning session down at the Senior Center uh, on the uh, State Hospital property, uh, what it should be reused for. Mm -hmm. And that was very successful. They had um, over 100 people, well over 100 people attended all day Saturday's session, and a lot of them liked it. They thought it was a good format. So she's gonna take a look and see if she can do something similar on the downtown you know, you have, the issue, you have the issue of the pocket park, you have the parking issue, the traffic issue, the, um, all, you know, the signage, the Park Street stores would like to have signs to tell people where the stores are, um, you know, a, a lot of little things like that that need Can to be looked at. And, and if you, you know, get everybody sitting, growing. <laughs> yes, and if you get everybody sitting in one room, you know, Different people come up with different ideas, and sometimes something one committee never thought of, another committee will come up with it. <laughs> True. Make it better. I understand, Mike, that the director of the library is leaving. Yes, she's leaving this month. Uh, she's going to take. She's taken a position uh, in Gloucester as their library director, 
And um, I think she was originally from up around that area. And although she'd be living in Wayland, she understands she bought a, a property up in that area, I think over on Newburyport. And she's, uh, it's about to be a pretty tough commute from Newburyport to uh, Midfield. So she's decided to relocate up in that area. And uh, library trustees are uh, already beginning to try to figure out how to replace her. There'll be a recruiting process. And I think the last time they had quite a bit of community involvement in the whole procedure. And she's been there for six years. She's certainly uh, done a lot of things in the library and changed Beautiful, a lot. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, it, it's very different library than it was when she came. Very so. true. Things that she has initiated, uh, something else again. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, if you read up about libraries with this whole advent of ele the electronic age and the computer age and cell phones and iPads and uh, p whatever. I know what you mean. The world's changed. Like yes, and, and the idea of going to the library and taking out a book, while many people still do that, uh, the majority probably want to download it onto their iPad. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have other things like uh, the oral book series. And, and you go in the library and they have concerts and they have you know, employment, uh, how to find a job and how to write a resume and how to start a business. And a lot of things like that that have really changed yeah, right, right. the nature of the library business. And in order to survive, I think libraries have had to do that. They've had to reorient or revision what their mission is. So. Well, Mike, I see by the old clock, it's about time for us to close. But as you know, before we do, and I always take a pleasure in just sitting here chatting with you about many things. Is there anything you'd like to add before we say goodnight? Um, well, I, I think uh, Probably we've gone over so many things that I'm sure as soon as I get out the door I'll remember something I should have talked about, but I didn't. Um, we, we do have the Montrose School Athletic Center as well underway. That probably should be completed in the fall. Uh, that's quite a project. That's a huge building. I don't They're think keeping that building too, aren't they? Yes, yes. And people may wonder what's the story on the 40B on West Street? My understanding, they're just waiting for one more approval, and and they'd like to break ground on it as soon as possible. So I would expect within the next month or two to see some action taken on that property. Um, it's uh, it could have some impact on on the uh, school system. We'll have to see how many children end up there with 92 units, but. Um, Fortunately, the school enrollment is down, I think, at least 400 students, so mm -hmm. there is some ability to absorb them. Uh, the other thing is the state budget and the state, um, the whole state process seems to be so uh, complicated this year between the, the casino rescinding legislation and the uh, billion dollars the legislature appropriated to expand the convention center. Uh, and the problems with the MBTA, it just seems the problems get bigger and bigger. Um, I know everybody long. says bigger is better, but when it comes to debt and uh, budgets, I'm not sure bigger is necessarily better. And I was going to ask you about the budget. Um, well, the tax bills have gone out. The first bill is due August 1st. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, uh, preliminary rate is up about three and a half. Percent. That the increase? Yeah, pr most of that is due to the fact that health insurance rates went up 8.8 percent. Uh, we have the full impact of the town garage that came on this year. Um, and keep in mind, the last two years, uh, two years ago, there was no increase in the tax rate; it was this level. And then last year was about two and a half percent. So uh, we've certainly come down from the seven and eight percent days we were at number of years ago when the school enrollment was jumping up and we were uh, building all these projects in town, particularly the three school projects and the uh, library town hall. 
Um, so I think we're um, we're doing pretty well. You know, we're trying to address funding our unfunded liabilities, which many communities haven't looked at. And I think Medfield's fortunate. We have a lot of smart people that have volunteered their time and talents to uh, helping to run the town, and and they have a lot of good ideas. And Medfield has listened to them, and I think we're in pretty good shape. Which is important. You know, yes. we mentioned, or you had mentioned off camera, uh, the graduating class, 2008, from Medfield and the Wall Street Journal. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, last Friday's Wall Street Journal had a three-page article on a 2008 graduate of Medfield High School. Many of you may remember him, Matthew O'Coin. He uh, looks like he's got quite a musical career ahead of him. In fact, though, this article was comparing him to Leonard Bernstein, uh, which is something when you're only 24. So um, it uh, shows, and now I understand there's uh, one of the Aduba girls is also on a uh, um, show, television show called uh, Orange is the New Black, right. I think it's mm -hmm. called. So, And someone said she may be out for an Emmy. So. We have some kids that are doing quite well, and so I hope the class of 13, when they get out there, we have some shining lights in that class, too. I hope so. so we've um, got some very, very intelligent. We have yes. one young man right here at Medfield DB. Yes, this well, <coughs> and they'll all be going off to set the world on fire in another few weeks, so we wish them the best. So. And I wish him the best also, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, about that time, and once again, I want to thank you for just sitting here yakking it up about uh, the happenings of Medfield. It seems like there's nothing to it. We don't even need a script. <laughs> <laughs> all, we yeah. have to, all we have to do is remember when to shut up and <laughs> we run out of time. Well, you remember, we never have because, it's, <laughs> yes. you see, one thing and I have found this, and I'm not the only one that has complimented you, but uh, with you, when I ask questions, information abounds. So. Why do you need something to written down? It's not necessary. Well, it's uh, it's all packed away in there, and I, even though I'm I'm trying to clean my desk these days, and for those of you who have been in my office and seen my desk, you can imagine what job that is. So. <laughs> but I'm making good progress. So. Yeah, it's there. So. But Mike, thanks. Thank you, Jack. Good pleasure as always. Always. Then we'll be talking again in see, August. See you next month. This is Jack Peterson. Wishing you and yours the very best. Good night. Roberta Lynch and you're watching Medfield.tv.